So if you ask ChatGPT anything about oil and gas, you'll get a very biased answer. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, it'll go into like why you need renewables and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, <laughs> we, good answers, like that's yeah. fine, but we're not shunning oil and gas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Cold Ones with Cold Word. I have our guest, Julie, here today from Digital Wildcatters. Hey, thanks, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about who you are, how you started Digital Wildcatters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I started with, well, I'm a founder of Digital Wildcatters. Mm -hmm. So we started it together back in 2018, I believe. Mm -hmm. We did, um, so I've been like behind the scenes. So it's funny because everyone knows Jake and Colin. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've always been like the person behind the scenes making it happen. So um, we started with a podcast back in 2018. Um, and from that, it just spun into a community. And now we're working on products and everything there. But yeah, I don't know if I answered that well on how we got started. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's been a long, long journey. When did So 2018 you started it? Yeah, that's when we started the podcast. And then, you know, it's had several different um, paths of like, what what are we doing mm -hmm. here? Did you guys start it expecting it to be a company like this and a business or was it just started for casual? Yeah, no, Colin and Jake met each other in 2018 and they both realized they were both very passionate about oil and gas and technology. And and that they realized they didn't have any way of finding out about new technology. Mm. And so they were like, let's just start this podcast, bring in cool people doing cool things. Yeah. And like, if no one listens, at least we get to hear about it. Yeah. Um, and that's how it started. It, was, it wasn't meant to be like a business or anything like that. It completely started as like, hey, this is a cool hobby. Nice. Um, and then it spun into what it is today. And now we're building products, turning more into a tech company. So that's crazy. it's exciting. That is really exciting. <laughs> you said you started off behind the scenes. And I know now you are a co-host of Energy 101, right? Yeah. Which I love that podcast. It helps me out so much. <laughs> I still feel very behind the scenes, oh, by do the way. You? Okay. <laughs> so what do you do kind of behind the scenes? Are you reaching out, inviting people to the podcast, trying to find the new technologies or? No, it started out with, um, so I've I've played every pretty much every role or position in digital wildcatters except for sales. I don't touch sales, okay. which is nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but every other thing I've done. So when we first started the podcast, it was I was the one doing the website, um, kind of making sure it got out mm -hmm. and edited and all of that. Um, and now today, so yes, we do host Energy One Hundred and One, and we're very. Um, we slack. So <laughs> if anyone wants to come on Energy 101, yeah. please reach out. Um, it's hard finding guests. Yeah. Um, so no, I don't really spend any time trying to find guests. Yeah. That's more like inbound. If people want to come on, I would love to talk to them. Mm -hmm. But it got to be too much with yeah. my other roles to try to keep that um, going. Keep but that cold calling going. Yeah. That's part of my job with trying to get cold ones with cold work rolling is trying to reach out through our sales guys to people that we know in the industry and get them on the podcast talking about new technologies yeah and i know i'm the same thing i'm sending out emails and we've designed this whole like form and pdf to send out to people and make it feel fun and exciting yeah. but it's just really hard i think a lot of people do don't want to be in front of the camera it's hard it is it yeah. is hard it's hard finding people who yeah, and want to explain very, for me at least, very basic level things. They don't yeah. get to talk about probably the cool things they want to talk about. Yeah, like, no, right? like a little bit lower. <laughs> um, but other than that, in the company, my position right now is head of marketing and head of product. Okay. So um, product manager and then doing all of our marketing efforts. Um, yeah, it's, that's good. Pretty much it. You said you're getting into your own products or... What, can you tell us a little bit about that or is it too early? Yes, no. So we just um, launched, it's not publicly launched yet, but we built a platform called Collide and we've actually had this platform. I want to say the first iteration was launched in 20, gosh, 22 maybe, I think. Um, and it's a platform for energy professionals. Um, think of it as LinkedIn for energy, oh, okay. um, so very specific. But we've 
built on to that now. So we built that first product on um, like a no code, low code platform. Okay. And so recently we just did it full stack, developed it ourselves, and we've added um, a job board to it. We've, so it has a forum of job board, and then we have um, some new AI products that we're launching. Uh, One being uh, Collide GPT, which we're very excited about, um, the GPT for energy. So trained on energy um, data and the cool thing about it is it's not biased. So if you ask ChatGPT anything about oil and gas, you'll get a very biased answer. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, it'll go into like why you need renewables and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, <laughs> we good answers, like that's yeah. fine, but we're not shunning oil and gas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, we're excited about that. That's, that's we're, pub we're publicly launching around sometime this month. <laughs> and that's an app, right? Yes. I think I actually downloaded it because I was on your website looking through some stuff and we saw that. So me and um, Milena, who helps me with social media, she runs our social media at Cobor. We both downloaded it and we're looking through it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll have to get you on the new platform. Okay. Right now, I think the old platform is still, still live. So. Okay. Yeah, excited. I'll have to get you on the new one. I was going to ask you about AI anyway, so it's great that you kind of oh, entered sweet. into that. Yeah. So I know for us, I've been leaning more and more on AI for just content creation, you know, little blogs and stuff like that. And at first it kind of felt like cheating almost, you know, like <laughs> going and getting it to write all this stuff. And then I go in and just kind of read through edit, it and edit yeah. it and stuff like that. But I find more and more uh, having it there, it just allows us to get more content out quicker and, and so many more people in the industry use it. So I don't know, how is it, how have you guys been using it within Digital Wildcatters to help you? In? Yeah, yeah, the same. Um, when you're a small team using it to leverage uh, any task you can mm -hmm. and make you more productive, why not? So I'm, I'm a huge component with it, like in operations and marketing, mm -hmm. um, really anywhere you can use it to automate as yeah. well. I do it. And for energy companies specifically, the marketing teams are usually one or two people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so using that to leverage your time, like 100% don't feel bad about it. Like it'll, Sky, if you're not using it, then you're like being left behind. Mm -hmm. you, there's no way that you can keep up. I just learned about this thing called seasoning chat GBT. And it sounds like that's kind of what you have with your new product. So when I first started using it, I'd tell it about cold war and then I'd say, this is what I want. And then I'd start a new chat each time. And each time I was like, do you remember what we talked about last time? They're like, nope. <laughs> so I was like, I have to re-talk to them about what, who we are, what we do, and what I'm looking for. Um, and I was just chatting with another marketing professional, like, no, you're supposed to keep it all in the same chat. And it's called seasoning. So I guess when you're talking about taking it for an energy specific use through your platform, you've kind of seasoned it with everything like oil and gas and energy and yeah kind of it's, a lot of it's a little bit more than that what we've done is build our own model okay. basically so it's a little bit more than that it's um it's so chat gpt trained on the whole internet like it yeah. has the whole internet we're taking energy content only and vetting that energy content but to your point yeah there's um if you get the enterprise level of chat gpt which is only like 20 dollars a month yeah you can put in exactly what you want about your company and any chat that you open, it'll have it will that. remember that. Yeah, yeah, it'll have that um, to oh, reference. Like I need to get that. There's also, <laughs> I really like Jasper. I've been looking at Jasper recently. Yeah, 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 it can do some really cool things and you can train that mm -hmm. on your company as well. There's a new one, Blaze too. I heard Blaze is yeah, great for marketing yeah. as well. Yeah. I know I need to spend more time figuring out AIs so, <laughs> so that it can give me some of my time back, but. So how will your the AI be utilized from people like me on your platform? How would I use it? So for people like you, um, you're a marketer, you have a question about, let's say something Cold War does, and you're like, man, how do I, how do I understand more in depth on what that actually means? Like you're not in the field or you're yeah. not whatever, so you might not understand as much. You can go and ask that question. But I think what's cooler than like marketers using it because I feel like we have a lot of resources. Um, field guys. Okay. Field guys who don't have, they can't just like Google a specific 
and I can't even think of a question because I'm not yeah. on the field. Um, but something super technical that, you know, it's not on the internet. You get it from Billy Joe, who's been in the field for yeah. 50 years. Um, it's kind of indexing that knowledge oh. and really using it to, and hopefully tr it's a better answer yeah. than you can get from anywhere else. Um, mm -hmm. So really taking the knowledge from, there's a huge knowledge gap in energy yeah. where you have the boomers who are starting to leave yes. and then you have the millennials who are coming up and there's like that gap where that knowledge isn't getting shared. Yeah. So it's like figuring out, putting all that together and that's kind of what our platform is. Cool. And of course, using it in like a Gen Z way where they're, yeah. they're gonna be doing everything through. Right. Exactly. I was just actually talking to somebody about um, where we get the most views through our social medias and like, I mean, LinkedIn, we have a big following on LinkedIn, but I find actually we have more interactions on um, Instagram. And that was really surprising to this person I was talking about marketing, but I'm like, but you think about it, all the people that are in the profession right now are the millennials and they are heavy on Instagram yeah. and then we're just getting, you know, into other, we haven't started a TikTok account yet, but we're exploring it. We're just trying to be where our audience is and you're right, so it's. yeah. TikTok is a great place for um, oil and gas. There's a lot of oil is and there? gas. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Colin has a TikTok, and I mean, millions of views and mm. tons of like field guys in the in yeah. the comments. So, so we should get in there. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So podcasting and oil and gas, you're in that space. How, what have you been seeing? Yeah, so I think what y'all are doing is really cool. I I actually worked for a company um, back in 2019. Um, it was in cybersecurity mm -hmm. and I was working, I mean, I had founded DW at the time as well. Okay. So I was seeing how podcasting was coming up and I tried to get them, they were a B2B company and I tried so hard to get them to start a podcast. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, it's a great way for um, your clients to really get a deeper engagement with you. Yeah. Um, you, you, do, you can't really do long form content where you just get to talk any other way. So they wouldn't do it. And I just think I push it for a lot of companies because even if you're not getting views and I tell this all this, like you see, there's some, <laughs> there's some podcasts out there who just boast about millions and millions of views. It doesn't matter. No. And especially in a niche podcast, like you don't want millions of views because I'm questioning if yeah. you're getting millions of views where who are, are they? Yeah, like where? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the deep engagement that you get. So I'm more concerned with, okay, if you throw an event, how many people do you get yes. there? Because that's how you can see mm -hmm. how your like podcast is doing or how your content is doing. Is like, are you building the community that will come out and hang out with you? Yeah. And to use it as well as to maybe talk to a client. Yeah. And it's like a low pressure environment where y'all don't have to talk about your product. Yep. You can sit there and talk about the industry and the trends and yep. everything and they're going to like love you even more getting more engaged mm -hmm. with you. So I think leveraging it for networking and um, really building that community. Every company should have their own community. Yep. Yep. Um, it's the only way to I think get more engagement on your product. Yeah. We do that a lot. We have a lot of events that we host um, here at the Tech House and we've been hosting with some co-hosts recently but we find that um, like those connections and really like having you know people over here we're not trying to sell to them while we're doing our poker games or you know yeah. whatever else but we're having our parties and stuff like that it's just really about like can you connect with one person it might not help you out that day but say in a couple months or a year from now whether they're with that company or another like oh i know this person mm -hmm. from cold war um their technology kind of sounds like what we're talking about maybe i'll get them in for yeah. you know it's just having that community and i think actually houston is really good at that calgary's not bad either we've got i don't know if you've ever heard of plus 15 in calgary mm -hmm. it's a bunch of walkways all across downtown that connect all the major buildings downtown um because we're <laughs> very cold winters but it's great walking around downtown calgary if you're in the industry you bump into so many people as you're oh, walking Oh, yeah. so, and I think that I, you really feel that community here in mm -hmm. Houston and every event that we come to, I see more and more people that I recognize and that we've seen had here in the past yeah. or I've seen that um, 
we do a lot of social octane events as mm-hmm. well and they've got a great community as well they so, do. yeah 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 really it does help my job a lot <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, there's no B to B. There's no B to C. It's all human to human. Yeah, it is. You're, you have to make that connection and people will remember that. Yeah. Do you find that now with our post pandemic era, do you think that the virtual connections are growing or do you think still having that human element is? Human element. Yeah. 100%. It's not going away. <laughs> yeah. I think everyone got burnt out on virtual um, things. I don't think you can connect as well virtually. I mean, some people may disagree, but yep. I'm very much um, an in-person. Mm-hmm. I, I connect better in person yep. than I would over a Zoom call. You, you just it's different. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think um, virtual is great anymore. No, I'm awful. Yeah. I'm like so distracted when I'm on virtual meetings. I'm like yeah. doing so much yeah. work in the background. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. I cannot be in front of a computer screen without <laughs> trying to do eight things at a time. <laughs> yep. Yep. So how has it been running and starting a company when you had small kids? So 2017, so your youngest was about three at the time? Yes. Or a couple of years yeah, old? Yeah. Three or four. Yeah. So yeah, I've been... Um, I've been working since, and when I say working, I it's like odd job. So, um, my I stayed at home mm-hmm. and didn't do anything with my first two, mm-hmm. um, and then my third was born, and I was already kind of doing some things. I started out. So Colin, Colin's my husband. Mm-hmm. He's also a co-founder at Digital Wildcatters. Um, he's always been an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. but he worked out in the field for 10 years and every year at the start of the year, he's like, I've got to quit my job. Mm -hmm. I want to quit my job. I want to quit my job. And I think it was 20, 2018, 2017, maybe he was, no, it was 2018. He's like, okay, I'm quitting my job. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, go for it. And so he quit his job and I started taking on virtual assistant jobs. And that's actually how I got into um, marketing is being a virtual assistant, you kind of learn how to do a lot of different things. Um, Mm -hmm. But one of the jobs was working on a magazine for uh, women in business. And it was it was fun. I learned a lot about branding and marketing there. And that was when my I was on meetings like breastfeeding my baby. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> so I worked at home with them until, uh, well, all of them stayed at home with me. But I homeschooled my kids. Oh wow! So Good for you. my oldest was in third grade. Yeah. Um, and I can't even remember. It's it's also such a blur because <laughs> yeah. I was trying to do way too much. Yeah. I'm like timeline. Don't ask me. I have no idea. But in 2020, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't try to work. I think I was working um, six different clients. A lot of them were full time. And I'm like, what am I doing? And while trying, having a baby, while also homeschooling, homeschooling, I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? (laughs) So 2020, January 2020, I was like, okay, I'm going to make the hard decision and send them to school. Yeah. Um, So I was a kindergartner and a third grader. And I sent them January. They were sent back in March. Pandemic <laughs> 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 Yeah, so it lasted six weeks. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Just as you're getting used to it. Yeah. You're like, yeah, freedom. Yeah. <laughs> so we did our like public school virtual, which was so much harder than just homeschooling yeah. them. Yeah. I wish I would have just kept them another year or that six months. But um, no, it was, it, it was challenging mm-hmm. trying to work at home with kids. Um, but it's also kind of cool because I know that they'll always like remember mm-hmm. like working and they have that work ethic yeah. ingrained in them. And yeah. even to this day, they're always trying to start a business. Um, they see both their parents being founders. Yeah. So it's it'll be interesting to see what they grow up and do. But um, it was very, very hard at the mm-hmm. time. And... I'm thankful they're all in school now and mm-hmm. they're all at a fun age and I can now kind of have a little bit of balance in my life. Yeah. Because um, yeah. there was a ton of mom guilt of I still have working all and trying yeah. to, yeah, me too. But mm-hmm. when they were little, I think my my youngest, he'd be like, play trucks with me. And I'm like, 
in a meeting and I'm like, sorry, bud. And it just, it breaks your heart. It does. I know I, I kind of still am in that right now. Like I do like a side hustle on the evenings and weekends as well as my own, my own startup. And you know, I was trying to like, I just really wanted something that I could build myself and having all the background in marketing. Mm-hmm. That was the funnest part of it really yeah. it was like, designing a website, you know, creating all the branding and the sales sheet. And I loved, and then, and then learning how to market it, uh, paid marketing on, um, like Facebook and stuff and really trying to get that traffic. And now I'm like completely full. can't do anymore. I don't do any more marketing because I don't want anybody else to <laughs> call me or, you know, yeah. trying to get in. But, and now it's like, I, I hope that the girls see me working and then working in the evenings yeah. and like, and, and appreciate, you know, everything they have because we're working this hard. And I think they do. I do rely on them to do a lot more around the house Mm -hmm. though. And sometimes I get the, oh, my friends don't have to do chores. (laughs) (laughs) Like we all live here together. We're all gonna have to help out the household. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's all I see now is like, when they're older, they're gonna appreciate um, knowing that these things don't just happen. Your clothes just aren't clean and placed in your drawers. You know, as somebody that's doing this work, you know, so I hope, I hope that it, they have a good work ethic in the future. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the coolest tech app that you can't live out without right now? Um, honestly, ChatGPT. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> good. It, it helps me with <laughs> me everything. <too. laughs> Here, I got my little card of my rapid fire questions. Uh, who's your dream podcast guest? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to get out of like a business mind. I can't though. Probably Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. They'd be, they'd be fascinating. (laughs) Okay. Um, What was your favorite episode? I guess you can do any digital wildcat or not just the ones that you do because you're energy 101 only or do you? Yeah, no, I'm energy 101 only. And of course, one of my episodes is going to be my favorite. (laughs) Yes, of course. Um, My favorite episode is definitely energy 101 with Justin Gauthier. It's such, he's, he's, he's great. He's amazing. He explained everything to us. Like we were five, (laughs) literally (laughs) he was speaking to us. Like he speaks to his child. So I appreciated it. Um, and it was, it was really good episode. Awesome. Essential podcasting tool. You couldn't live without. Chat GPT to give me all the questions. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, do you have a best platform to keep up with for energy trends and news? I'm just going to plug, yeah, Collide. (laughs) Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're trying to get all the resources together in in one place. Nice. We're excited for that. You guys have your own networking events. I was going to say your favorite networking event, but you you said as a mom and, you know, you don't get to go to all the fun ones, but is there one that you enjoy doing every year or you look forward to or? Yeah, I mean, our events are always a lot of fun. It's always great energy. Um, As far as other events, I don't really (laughs) go to any, so... Um, I guess my own, I would say empower is, is fun. Um, but energy tech nights are fun too, Mm -hmm. but again, I don't go to anyone. So (laughs) sorry. (laughs) All good. (laughs) Uh, what advice would you give your younger self if you, um, don't try to do it all. Okay. Yeah. I tried way too long to try to be everything for everyone and it just burnt me out mm, that's a good one i like that might have to use it someday yeah. <laughs> yeah. um and then i guess is there uh, how has hosting energy 101 helped your outlook on energy um it's i just learned so much it's cool getting to um ask any question like you don't have to worry about oh my gosh am i gonna look stupid Mm -hmm. like i should know this by now especially being from midland i'm like there's some things that i know i should know (laughs) and my dad worked in the industry for 40 years and i'm like why don't i know this so being in a in a place where i'm like i know i can ask these questions and i don't care if they make me look stupid um it's it's great i've learned just very basic yeah things um and yeah, just getting to talk to really cool people is... Yeah. I'm the same as you when I first started at Cold, where I was oil and gas, but only like just looking at like payments and like putting them against jobs. So I really didn't have a lot of like knowledge. And when I started at Cold, where it's completions, fracking technology. Mm-hmm. And I kept, you know, trying to pull up visuals too for the marketing. And I kept pulling up drilling rigs and stuff. And they're like, that's not fracking. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I swear I'll learn. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, it's like you come into this, unless you've been out on the rigs, which a lot of the guys in the industry have, so they understand it yeah. all. There is not a quick way to learn oil and gas. No, <laughs> and, and something I've learned from Energy 101 is no one knows everything. Like mm -hmm. there, it is such a large industry with so much to learn. Mm -hmm. You're just, there's been episodes where Colin's like, oh, that was a really good episode of Energy 101. Like I, mm -hmm. I learned from that. Um, so that's cool. It's like, yeah. uh, you're never gonna know it all. You're always gonna have questions about different areas. So don't be afraid to ask questions.